Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? Ah, probably never. However, what I do know is that if I've done my editing job, I should be in black and white. But this is still 4F Beauty. Fear not. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of the description, that this is a palette bingo today using Melt Gemini, one of my favourite, favourite palettes, even though it's quite new to my collection whilst not being newly released. And the palette bingo is with someone who hasn't been on my channel for quite a while but she is a nurse so she's understandably been rather busy it is of course Miss Mischief herself Valerie why don't you come on over Valerie okay if I'm getting to the singing stage, that means I need more caffeine. So, as I have said now, for what feels like time immemorial, if you want to find out exactly how this looks, which numbers and which corresponding colours I got to use, then my friend, you are in precisely the right place. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. You will have seen from the intro that it's the Gemini palette I'm using today. And it is a palette bingo. Um, and rather than because the way that Val and I choose to do it is we pick each other's numbers, doubly leaving it to chance. And the colours that she's pulled for me are Luna, Lorelei, Polka Dot, Goals and Fire OG. So I have swatched all of those on the back of my hand, as you can see, three browns, two greens, only one shimmer. So, I'm glad there was at least one green in there. I don't think I've ever used this palette and not used the green at some point, somewhere. Okay. Although this is a palette bingo, it is still a teaching channel. So by virtue of that, um, I'll mention Val a bit. I may leave it more to the end to talk about her. I may talk about her while I'm applying. Not sure yet. See how I feel. Um, my chronic pain means I cannot blend as quickly as some people. However, this has the added benefit that even beginners can keep up with me. And I don't cut any blending out or speed any blending up. The only exception to that rule is um, if I'm doing a winged liner because I've got a separate mini tutorial <clears throat> on doing winged liners or if I decide to do a cut crease I'll do one of them usually normal speed and then speed the other one up because I'm aware they take a lot longer. Um, put a contact lens in yesterday for the first time in ages. My eye is telling me it's not enjoying it. I've not got it in now obviously, I only had it in for about three hours. Anyway, I also zoom right in close to my eyes so that you can see exactly what's going on even if you're watching me on a small phone screen. So, I'm about to insert a clip which will talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids. So many people with hooded lids 
or so many people with deep set eyes are told or believe they have hooded lids. So they follow the hooded lid tutorial and still don't get a great makeup look. So I'm going to, again, zoomed in close, it's just my eyes on screen, talk you through how to work out which eye type you have and explain the workaround for your eye type so that you get the best finished result and the best longevity from your look. <clears throat> now, when, my eye, when it's only my eyes on screen, if I'm looking down to add more pigment, clean a brush, change a brush, etc., you do get a lovely shot of my wonderful widow's peak hairline, but I think that's a small trade-off for being able to see what's going on, especially if your eyesight's not what it used to be. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to insert the clip just here, and I will see you at the other end of it to apply some coloured pigment to my eyelids. See you in a minute. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, 
get a brush something like this or a pencil brush sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap if you have deep set eyes like myself all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using just sit back relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open so two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues hey my lovelies i am back apologies if i wiggle a lot i'm having one of those days when i just cannot get comfortable but i've got to get this filmed because we've got a specific date it needs to be up by so I'm going to start off with this fluffy eye blender from e.l.f. it's meant to be a round one but it got a bit flattened in the post so and I'm going to start off with the lightest shade Luna now as always I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again the reason I do this is twofold one, I'm 46 two, I've lost over 12 stone or 14 stone which is over 200 pounds so the skin on my eyelids moves and if I just rely on the windscreen wiper it folds over on itself and I get those telltale white stripes tiger striping, barcoding, whatever you want to call them by doing the Viennese waltz you're very gently manipulating the lid so that you don't get that issue and it's not just because of my age and my weight loss I know teenagers who've always been slim that have similar issues I also always start at the outside edge where possible because if you do put too much pigment down it's much easier to deal with it when your nose is not in the way I'm going to start about half out to my natural crease in my brow and I'm just going to fluff this across I'm not expecting it to be particularly vibrant because obviously I'm a pale girl and it's a pale colour but it does build up you can build it up as you can see I just prefer to start off slow and build the colour up rather than just wump it all down in one go you know so how's your day been? has it been a good one? I hope it has and if it hasn't then I sincerely hope that tomorrow is better for you and if you're at the start of your day watching me then darlings I hope it's as fabulous as you are now the reason that I do sort of both eyes well not at the same time obviously I do them one after the other but the reason that I don't completely finish one eye before moving to the next is because part of my fibro, my eyelids, um, well, a lot of my face can get puffy uh, but most noticeably I've noticed my lids can get very very sort of almost looking like conjunctivitis but without the pain and the redness and the, the sticky gummy horribleness um, and because of that sometimes when you sit back and relax your brows now I've done exactly the same shape both sides but if you can see this one looks rounded and this one looks flat so this is obviously slightly puffed up today so I'm just going to need to put a little bit extra just in the middle there 
just to make it look the same when your eyes are open. And if I had already done all of my makeup, I wouldn't necessarily know which colour I needed to adjust. But, I, but it would show that there was something not quite level, you know. Right, I'm just going to clean that brush off on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches anymore, they're much too harsh on your brushes. And I'm going to go into Lorelei. Which is kind of a, a mustardy brown. And I'm going to pop that just a fraction lower. Slowly start to build that depth of colour up. I suppose really I should apologise for you not having the usual amount of films that I normally do. I had been doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday uploads for most of 2020. Um, so far this year I've only managed sort of Thursday, Saturday. I've not managed to get my Tuesday ones up. Um, to be honest, it's a combination of pain and my mental health hasn't been too great recently. Um, I don't know whether I'm getting a bit of, you know, the weather affecting it or if it's just accumulation of everything. Uh, second lockdown at the UK and all that sort of thing. Um, but I just just haven't got the impetus to get up and film, you know, unless it's a collab because obviously then I'd be letting somebody down. So it's kind of that really helps a lot. really weird, that's going a little bit patchy there. Well, it is in the mirror, in the viewfinder. In the mirror it looks absolutely fine. I'm going to be putting a darker colour over the top anyway, so I'm not overly worried. But I would like it to look as good as possible. So yeah, I'm, I've got some new palettes arriving, so I'm hoping that will give me the kick up the bum I need to, uh, to film with them. Because I've got quite a few films that I want to do, I just... I just sit there with a cup of coffee thinking, I'll get up and start that in a minute, I'll get up and start that in a minute. And then, you know, I look around and it's like one o'clock and I've lost the daylight and it's just... I'll get there, folks. I just... just wanted to let you know why there's been a bit of a slowdown on my films so far this year. See this side? No problem at all. I must have a really dry patch just there on my lids. Because it's clearly not the pigment itself that's an issue. Oh well. I do like these big fluffy brushes for blowing colours out. The thing to remember is whatever the size of the head of the brush, that's how far it's going to blow the shadow out. So if you do have less real estate than me, just start with a smaller brush, basically. Give this a good clean. Now I'm going to change to one of their blending eye brushes, one of their little 
more compact ones and I'm going to go into Fire OG which is the green and I'm going to start off just on this outer edge here and really just really concentrate on getting that as nicely diffused as possible so I'm going to place it on with this brush and then I'm going to get a big old fluffy with nothing on it and just use that to help diffuse the colour out as I said I'm concentrating mainly on this outer third and the outer edge of my mobile lid and again giving it a good old blend I do like this palette. I resisted it for quite a while and got a number of different palettes that had similar colours in. I did a, a four pan dupe of it with some Colourpop shadows that I bought um, and then I got the Kaleidos Sci-Fi Green. <clears throat> But then someone was selling this on Depop for a very sensible price and I just couldn't resist. So, yeah. I had lots of fun playing with this particular palette. And I can see why people have raved about it the way they have. That being said, I do think that the Kaleidos Sci-Fi Green is a good alternative if you can't get hold of this. You can certainly get very very similar looks but then as we know I like the Kaleidos formula anyway I um, I was watching a film on YouTube by uh, Amy Loves Beauty and she discovered this uh, European indie brand which she was saying rivaled the duochromes from places like Davina and Cleona which obviously not so easy for us to get here in the UK so I kind of went and had a bit of a peruse and I ended up buying one mat and seven of the shimmers. So yeah, uh, that's a brand that I wasn't planning on trying this year but looks like I'm going to be. Uh, and I also, one of my lovely friends Mary Makeup and More. She uh, she let me know that Makeup Addiction was having a bit of a promo a promo code thing going on. Right. Okay. I need to go. It's my meds at the front door. Sorry about that. I'm back. Okay. I'm going to be using the shimmer on my lid, rather obviously. So I've got this flat, I suppose it's a concealer brush. Now, 
never go into a press pigment with a wet brush but regardless of who the shimmer is by I do usually wet the brush A it helps minimize fallout and B it can give a slightly more reflective finish although from what I remember these are not overly reflective in this palette so I'm going to give it a spritz with this setting spray now you can use anything you can even just use plain water out of the tap um, but now your ferrule's wet put it in your knuckles and spin because you don't want moisture getting down and loosening the glue that holds the bristles in place Otherwise, you'll no longer have a brush, you'll have a bloody expensive stick. The reason I like these really small brushes is because you can get right into the corner with them. Um, just drag that out across the lid. Dry the brush, grab a bit more, see what it's like if I don't wet it. Actually I think I prefer it when I don't wet the pigment. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to buff and blend it into the matte on the outer edge there. Now, with my left eye you can see I've got super deep creases just here. This is where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old. By the, uh, the doctors at the ophthalmic hospital. Now, because of that, I do actually have to break one of the biggest rules that I tell you not to do, which is don't stretch your lid. But if I don't, unfortunately what happens is that the pigment builds up loosely in these creases and then ends up falling into my eye and down my face through the day. But the way that I do it to prevent any further damage to the skin is I literally only pull it out far enough to straighten the creases, I don't pull it up around my ear roll. I blend the colour in as quickly as I can and then gently put the eye back, I don't just let it spring back and then I do the rest of the eye as normal and you but you can see how much additional movement there is from the skin on this lid compared to the skin on that lid and that goes to show you how much damage can be done even at a very very young age again just buff the edge there to blend it in I like that. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you and I'm going to go and pop some foundation and other base products on and I will be back to finish this eye look off with you. Now, I've got to wait a little while, uh, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. So I'll see you right now. Hey my lovelies, I am back. <clears throat> Soap brows tad wild today, admittedly, but let's just run with it. Uh, I used the Fire OG, the uh, khaki green for the brows. I feel like Groucho Marks. Anyway, um, flat top brush. 
the only shade that I haven't used yet that Val pulled for me is Polka Dot. So I shall use this under the lower lash line. So, Val. Known Val for, oh gosh, quite a long time now. Almost since the start of my channel. She's Ms. Mischief now. But she was something lips and more. I think. It'll come to me probably at 2 o'clock in the morning. And um, she's a nurse by profession. So obviously at the moment she's, let's just say, one of the unsung heroes we've got out there. Whether she's working with COVID patients or whether she's working with other patients, freeing other nurses up to work with COVID patients. Um, she's around about my age. However, she has children and grandchildren. But she, like me, is fond of a bit of colour. And she and I hadn't collabed for ages. Um, and I hadn't bothered her because I thought, you know, she's up to her eyes, she's a nurse, she's probably coming home absolutely knackered every night. Uh, I'm going to use this eyeshadow C brush, chunky brush, and I'm going to go into Luna, which is that lightest shade, just to buff this lower lash line out a little bit. Um, but I messaged her saying, you know, obviously I messaged her, Happy Christmas, and then I was like, Happy New Year, how are you doing? Do you fancy doing a club anytime soon? Thinking she'd say, Oh God, now I'm up to my eyes with work. And she actually jumped at the idea, which was awesome. As I said at the moment, I'm finding it difficult to give myself a kick up the butt to come and film. If I've got a collab, I'll get up and film. Ridiculous, I know. Um, and we decided on a palette bingo. And I said to her, I want to be using more of the palettes that I've got this year rather than continually buying new because I've got so I've got more palettes than anybody ever needs. Um, but I'm a bit of a collector as much as um, you know I use pretty much all the palettes that I've got. I'm also a collector of makeup. So there's some palettes that you know even if they you know got way too old to use and stopped working anywhere decent. I would still keep hold of them for the collection factor, you know. So I said to her, how do you feel about using one of the older palettes? And she said, yeah, what have you got in mind? And I said, I listed a couple off and I got to Melt Gemini and she's like, oh yes, I haven't used that for ages. So that's what we decided to go for. Um, and by virtue of using older things, I have grabbed my Wet n Wild, do you remember the Gothographic they did? This is the first loose highlighter I ever had and it's in shade Moon Tears. And uh, this is just a really cheap lip brush that I bought off of eBay well over a decade ago now. Possibly closer to two decades ago. And I'm just going to pop a little bit of this up under the tail, oh I've forgotten how bright it was, up under the tail of my brow, wow. Mental note, Bomber, this one is particularly bright. Uh, and then on my inner corner, and as you know I like to bring it under the tear duct, and just fade it along the lower lash line like that. Oh, why did I stop using this bloody highlighter? It's beautiful. 
Um, yeah, so hence the palette bingo. And Val and I to because obviously palette bingo is a chance anyway of what you're going to pull. So we do ours a bit differently where we choose each other's numbers. Just to really increase the randomness factor. So, I'm going to pause you one last time my darlings. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlighter on my face. And I'm probably going to look like the Tin Man when you come back. Do something with my hair, mascara, lippy, you know the drill. And I'll be back with my finished look for you again. Instant. I am back. As I said, I kind of... I like highlight, what can I tell you? Mascara is the Clarins one that my friend Heather gave me, the Mascara Supra volume. Lippy is my Uoma Angela Lippy because clearly I had to. Uh, what else? Setting Spray is my Orange Cream School. This is about the third one of these I've gone through. I love Slay All Day. It's by far. It's the one that holds my makeup on for the longest without being super drying because I have found that Urban Decay's All Nighter can be drying whereas that is just chef's kiss. Um, I do have a code with Gerard but that's not why I'm saying it. I'm saying it because I like that setting spray. Right, so this is my finished look for the palette bingo. What do you think? Did I do well? It's hard to muck it up really when you got as good a palette as Gemini though really isn't it? So if you're one of my 4F babies please double check you are still subscribed, YouTube are still unsubscribing you and they're mucking about with the notification settings. Mine all got knocked back to uh, personalised from being all. And although they don't seem to be sending emails at the moment, if they do decide to send them again, if your notifications are set to personalised, you won't get any. Um, that's not just for my channel, that applies to all of the channels you follow. So it's definitely worth double checking all of those if you've got, you know, half hour to spare. Once you've done that, I would love to hear if you have this palette. Um, is it one of your favourites? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Have you done a look like this before where you've done the brown side and the green side together? Are you tempted to recreate this look? Probably not, but you know, there's always a chance. Someone might. And obviously, once you've done all of that, I'm going to need you to go over to the lovely Val and check out her film with the shades that got pulled for her by me using a random number generator. Do all the good youtuber things over there, say hi, tell her you're from 4F, give her a like, give her a comment, um, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe to her, thank her for what she's doing as a nurse, that would be nice. Um, yeah, basically show her the same kind of love that you show me in my comments because Let's face it, the 4F family is the nicest family on YouTube. If you are here from Val's channel or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is pretty much an indication of what you're going to get from me. Um, applying makeup with what I'm told is a soothing voice. Uh, whilst blethering on about everything and nothing in particular. So if that sounds like the kind of thing that you could be interested in, 
it'd be awesome if you two would like to join the family. It's super easy to do. There's no there's, there's no signing your name in blood or signing away your firstborn child or anything. Literally, all you have to do is hit that red subscribe button, turn it grey. Then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that one day YouTube will start sending them again. In the meantime, as well as a huge back side, I have a huge back catalogue of films you can be watching. Um, I have other palette bingos, I have lots of other collabs actually, I've I'm lucky I've collabed with a lot of different lovely people. Um, I've got product reviews, tutorials, mini tutorials for things like winged liner, eyebrow shaping, um, putting on false lashes. Uh, what else have I got? I, I even read you my favourite poem for goodness sake. You're going to find something in the myriad of films that I've done that hopefully will intrigue and delight you. So basically, as I've said now, for what feels like forever, if you need a bit of me time, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and enjoy my darlings. Right. As ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.